Hello and welcome to this afternoon's BFI Film Academy Lab, Film Poster Design with Sam Ashby. We are absolutely delighted to be running this session because as the number one film marketing tool, it does seem strange that the artists and designers behind that amazing tool are invisible. So we're hoping today we'll bring some visibility to that uh, career and we are also delighted to be welcoming our first young film programmer who will be interviewing Sam. So welcome Sam and Amy, it's great to have you both. And hey, hey hello. Hello. Hi. Um, before we get started, I'm introducing the session and I'll just say a few things about how the session is going to run. First of all, my name's Julia Andrews Clifford and I am the manager of the Young Film Programmers Network Southeast. I am a cis woman, uh, my pronouns are she and her, and I am white, middle-aged, and I've got long brown hair and I'm wearing purple glasses. Um, the BFI Film Academy Labs are designed for 16 to 25 year olds to gain industry insight, get professional advice and support to develop their film programming and film making pro portfolios. And so today's session, focusing on film poster design, is going to run like this. So the first half hour will be Amy interviewing Sam, and the second half hour is over to you lot. So it's really important that you get your questions ready. You can actually put them in the Q&A at any point. Uh, in fact, the sooner the better, um, before you forget them. Uh, but at five o'clock, we will hand over to those questions and the floor will be yours. So get thinking about those questions straight away. Um, there are also closed captions for those. So if you need those, go to the bottom of your screen and you'll see the live transcript. And if you have any problems with that, you can put it in the chat and we have uh, someone who can put you in touch with the link there. So without further ado, let me introduce Sam and Amy. So first of all, Amy, welcome. Uh, it's been, hello, Amy, I was going to give you a little bit of background about Amy. Um, she is the director of the Open House Film Club based in St Albans and Hertfordshire. And they've been running about a year and they've been extremely dynamic and proactive in just making it happen. They've run about five screenings, they've got a web page, they've got podcasts, they've got eventizing coming out of their ears. So welcome, Amy. It's real great pleasure to have you as our first YFP presenter. Oh, thank you, Julia. Um, as you said, I'm Amy. Um, I'm a cis woman uh, in her 20s with blonde hair and gold glasses. Um, as Julia said, I am one of the founders of Open House Film Club, and um, I'm so excited to talk to Sam today about film poster design because I'm sure like a lot of people here, we make a lot of film posters and it'd be nice to get uh, some advice on how to do it really well um, and just learn a bit more about the industry. Um, so I really appreciate this opportunity and I'm sure everyone else does as well. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. And so over to Sam. So just a little introduction about Sam. Um, when we were planning this session and researching Sam, it became quite clear that he might be the artist designer behind very many of the fantastic film posters, iconic film posters that you've seen for independent cinema over the last 15 years. Um, Sam's got a really interesting story that I'm not going to go into now, but he will be doing that with Amy later. But the kind of headlines are that Sam is uh, a graphic designer, a filmmaker, and at present is the creative director of Intermission Film, which is an advertising company that has a wing, which is about film poster design. Um, during that time, uh, he has created amazing artwork for independent distribution companies, both in the UK and internationally. Some of those include things like Control, um, let's talk about Kevin, we need to talk about Kevin, sorry. Um, and the slide that we had up there, um, my brain's gone, a woman on fire. <laughs> um, so uh, that gives you a flavor of some of Sam's work. He not only is an artist and designer, but he's also uh, expanded out into film, 
publication, uh, uh, film magazine publication with Little Joe, which as he says, is a magazine about queers and cinema mostly. <laughs> so he might touch on that a little bit later, as well as uh, his first forays into short filmmaking where Sam uh, made The Colour of His Hair in 2017, which got the London Short Film Festival Best Doc Prize, um, as well as being screened at the Rotterdam Festival in 2017. So quite a lot to talk about, but we will focus as much as we can at the start on film poster design. But as you're watching, if there are questions about those things as well from the floor, we'll be happy to take those. So. Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Amy. Thanks. Thank you, Julia. Um, so Sam, I guess uh, the best place to start is the beginning. Um, would you be able to tell us about um, your journey into graphic design and, and how did that lead you to becoming um, a film poster designer? Yes, absolutely. Um, shall I do my, I, I'm, I'll quickly introduce myself. I'm a yeah. um, cis male, 40 years old, uh, dark hair, dark eyes. Um, I think that's it. But um, yeah, my journey into film and film posters is kind of, I kind of, I guess I, I think everyone that gets into this job maybe has their own individual story to tell, but mine, I certainly didn't do it through any kind of traditional path. I studied art history, I didn't study design at all. And so it was kind of through a series of different uh, discoveries, job, jobs that I was doing that I guess opened me up to the idea that film posters might be something that I could do. But um, in my youth, I was making short films and making posters for those short films. Um, or, and, and so there was always something in, in there, I guess, for me and interest in that. But um, when I left university, I was thinking maybe film production was of interest to me and I was getting lots of running jobs. I worked on the first McFly video. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that so clearly. <laughs> it was a fun time in my life. <laughs> classic. Um, and there was just, I guess, a sense that it was a very long journey in on that ladder up to becoming a producer. And I remember meeting people that had been receptionists for three years and hadn't got, gone up any higher than that. And so it was quite, difficult thinking about like the journey into becoming a producer. Um, and then I was working as a runner at Buena Vista International, which I, it kind of includes Disney, I think. And at the time it was basically just kind of organizing their store cupboard, <laughs> just like filing things. And um, there was a woman that I occasionally had to deliver things to who worked there. And she often had these beautiful black boards with poster like mock-ups printed and stuck onto and um she this is, we're talking like almost 20 years ago now and um and she really kindly just kind of talked me through what they were in the process because she was essentially a marketing manager there and this the company called empire design was sending her lots of options for her to choose from and um and so i was, became really obsessed with that process and and she very kindly put me in touch with them and I got a running job there. Um, and it was through working there that I spent a lot of time in, in the design studio. And so I was completely yeah, in awe of these designers doing this work and really wanted to get my hands dirty and do it myself. And so after I think about nine months there as a runner, um, they let me have a couple of weeks of work experience in the studio. Um, and so it was through doing that that I kind of really got a few little poster jobs under my belt. Nothing, I don't think anything that I did really even got sent to the client, but it was just enough for me to kind of, to see that I could at least do something. Yeah. Um, and I think at that point I'd been contacting various other small agencies and there weren't many at the time and particularly art house ones, which is really my area of interest. And um, I read about a company called All City, who was run by these guys called Pete and Dave, who, um, and I think I read about them in a copy of Empire Magazine. And so I just decided to email them. And 
they were really responsive and very kindly yeah gave me a little bit of work experience and four years later I was head designer at the company so it was That's a really fast. <laughs> journey. it was a really steep learning curve yeah I bet um where did you go from there because um how, so you're at all city for four years um when did you branch out and start to um go into your own work and make your own studio yeah so being there was incredible I, I really learned everything on that job through through Pete and Dave really a lot of you know a lot of their approach to filmmaking and the artistry and I think was they also the influences they weren't seeking influence from film worlds necessarily they, they also were fascinated in like uh, music design and artwork and you know so and, and my all my my own influences come from quite a broad area and I think that was really important to me to kind of develop my own style there um but I think after four years with that really steep curve and I think there was always part of me that wanted to do more and was kind of seeking other things and and so and and, and strangely being a film poster designer felt like something I'd fallen into so it didn't necessarily feel like my calling and obviously I was still interested in filmmaking and at that point I had this idea to do this publication Little Joe this queer cinema journal and so I thought well if I go out on my own then I can do the film posters but I can also do all these other things and so that's what I did and went freelance and um, that was back in 2008 I think um yeah and my life kind of went took a very different turn at that point in terms of becoming a you know business owner and um occasionally employing people but usually it was just me um and i kind of built up a lovely small roster of clients um people like Curzon and dogworth and peccadillo pictures and it was peccadillo who really um gave me a good shot and they gave me like projects like weekend that I think really helped define me as a poster designer like on my own yeah I think I remember reading that weekend was really inspired by um some queer photographers um that um you really took inspiration from that um and that is amazing that you can just take so many images and ideas from around the world and and use them and make them even bigger than they could ever have been before maybe um uh, so you talked a little bit about uh, little joe i'll just go into that a little bit quickly um you're about to launch your sixth issue oh your, yeah your sixth issue for the first time in six years um yeah. that's really exciting how do you feel <laughs> about um, it <laughs> it feels good it, it's something that i'd kind of put away a little bit and put it in a box in the attic i think in my head um because we did five issues in five years. It was like a whole, that really changed my life dramatically. First issue we only printed 500 copies of and, um, and, and it went around the world and got a nice kind of little cult following. And then, so gradually from there it really grew. And so, it, and it just became kind of my life for a long time. I was traveling to book fairs and to art institutions internationally doing screenings and and events and then obviously then doing the print publication and it is print only so it's kind of this and it's, it's fairly like it's not anti-internet by any means but it's definitely like trying to create the sense of uh discovery mm. in the reader and it's all about how because i i was discovering all these kind of underground queer film titles that i was kind of amazed that i hadn't really heard of before and so the whole project is really about Kind of instilling that sense of discovery in the reader and so I, and, I, and i kind of felt like the internet wasn't really conducive to discovery or discovering things it sort of felt like everything had kind of already been discovered that that was already online and then so the project is very much a kind of physical object um this one here this one from before oh yeah and it's paperback book so it's kind of very portable and kind of feels like a little secret that when you're reading it and um and so all of those things like i'd kind of you know it was it was a great 
it was a great project while it lasted for those five years. And, and then I was making films and doing other kind of art based projects. And it was only really when COVID happened that I kind of thought I'd make another, make another issue. So it's kind, of a COVID, it's kind of a COVID baby. Yeah, like many things I think at the moment. Um, do you, yeah. It's obviously print media as well, which is the same as a lot of posters, although of course posters are going more online now. Um, what kind of skills um, in terms of your graphic design um, are the same between like poster design and publication and what are different? What are the challenges between those? Yeah, I mean, I, it was a huge challenge for me because I've designed posters almost exclusively, occasionally book covers, but um, each of those is obviously a single, a single image and so trying to turn onto doing sequential design was completely yeah it was mind boggling for me for ages and I, I think I had content the content for the first issue for like two years before I finally finished the design of the of it figured out how it was going to look um I can be quite slow with things sometimes and um Never a bad thing <laughs> and so yeah, I would say in terms of the connections, I would I would say, yeah, it's so nice to be able to kind of create a, a striking page in a, in a magazine. And I think that is when you're, it's most connected to the books, to them, sorry, to the film posters. But the other parts of it are vastly different, like kind of, kind of creating the journey through the text and connecting images to that text is, is a whole other challenge, really. Mm. Um, and on top of that, as a side project, um, you also have your main job as being the creative director, um, one of the creative directors at uh, Intermission uh, Films. Could you just explain a little bit about like your typical day in terms of designing and talking to commissioners and things like that? Sure. Um, I guess there's never a typical day, which is so lovely. Um, there's always such a kind of range of projects that we're working on and each project will be at a a different stage. So yesterday I was mostly sending a print, a project to print. So that was a, a project uh, for a new film that we're working on called Benedetta by Paul Verhoeven. And um, essentially the poster was approved by the client a few days before. And then it went to the retoucher who did a beautiful bit of work on kind of polishing the image. Um, and then essentially I was kind of just fine tuning the text and adding the logos and the billing block and that kind of thing. And so that's, that's one part of the day, but, um, in terms of commissioning and all the rest. So we have a very, a very kind of, I guess it, de it depends on each company, but our, our, our company structure is that we have producers who deal with the clients. And then I kind of come in at the briefing stage along with maybe one or two of my other colleagues my, who are designers with me. And we'll listen to the, well, we'll have seen the film. We'll, we'll talk to the client about the brief. Um, they'll send us images. And then we'll essentially kind of go from there to, to our kind of creative brainstorming phase. Um, that's a whole other, whole other section. <laughs> But that's really like, that's really where the, the fun happens for us. Like, well, a lot in terms of how I work, like watching the film is, is the most important part of the job. And so that's, that's the point at which the ideas kind of really spark. And so I'll always have a, a pen and paper handy to, to sketch out ideas while watching the film. And then, but those are very, very rudimentary sketches of what will then kind of turn into those, into the designs. But, um, but working at Intermission is incredible for me because I've gone from being this sole trader when I was just doing my studio alone um, to working with a team of really talented designers. And so the whole process has completely kind of turned into something else, you know, yes. like collaboration. And, um, and collaboration was always part of the job because I was always collaborating with the marketing people or the, the, the filmmakers for the posters. But um, this is a whole other way of working in which 
each, pro each film poster that we produce at Intermission is essentially the product of a number of minds, which is kind of amazing. Um, and I think it allows the work to get really strong. So for example, if I have an idea that I feel like I can't achieve on a Photoshop level, it means that one of my colleagues can, who's much better at doing that aspect, could completely build an idea that I've got in my head and then they'll bring their own vision to it as well. And then maybe someone else will work on the type. And so, yeah, it's kind of, it's a, it's a really fun way of working for me. It sounds, it sounds really fun. I, I wondered whether there's ever like an internal battle um, between trying to tick boxes for distributors who want to reach target audiences and, and yourself and your team as artists and storytellers. Um, how do you yeah. like combine <laughs> your art with selling a product? <laughs> That's, I mean, it's, it's the job and, and it's always that battle going on. And sometimes that battle is a little bit more soul destroying than other times, but, but ultimately we are, we are in service for the client and the, you know, the client absolutely comes first. And so we, if we really believe in something, then we will try and fight our corner and we'll try and, you know, push for that. But, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And sometimes, um, things do get watered down in ways that we would maybe not like, but I think ultimately our job is to kind of always steer things in the best possible way, even when we feel like they're not, um, going the way that we would like. Mm. So, but it's definitely a challenge. I bet. <laughs> yeah, I really bet. Um, I'd love to, uh, to like get up some images of your posters so that everyone can see um, some of the stuff that you've worked on. Um, and I'd particularly like to look at um, maybe one of the ones that everyone's seen because of the posters that we've been advertising this with um, is Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which is absolutely one of my favourite films of last year. Um, it's a good film. It is. And it's a lot of your... Um, uh, posters uh, for films at, like focus on telling queer stories. How how long did it take you to be able to uh, focus on creating images around these stories? And did you make that your intention, or did you just kind of naturally find yourself doing that? Well, my kind of queer focus as a queer person, it was kind of essentially was a lot of it was because of the company uh, that I was working for, Peccadillo Pictures, who were one of my main clients when I went solo who they are a LGBT distributor. And I think most of their film releases are LGBT themes. Uh, and so that was, uh, Weekend was through them um, and a number of other queer, queer titles that I had the pleasure of working on. Um, and so I think Weekend kind of became my queer calling card, I guess. Um, and it was through that that people like Curzon, who I did portrait for, mm. um, I guess if they, they if they felt they needed a sensitivity towards a subject that was queer, then they they thought that I was maybe the, the right person for that job, which is quite nice. Um, and so with portrait, I mean the whole process of that was a tricky one, largely because we didn't get receive any on set photography. I so really all we had to to work from uh, stills from the film, which are never, it's, it's never ideal because it's the, the rate, um, the pixel size is, means it's in a, a tiny image compared to a, a proper photograph. And so this is kind of blown up way beyond the size that it should, but it was kind of all we had to work with really. Um, and we did, we did an alternate illustrated version with a, an artist called Tony Stella mm. as well. Um, but this one I love because it was so close to an original sketch that I'd done, um, in which I wanted to kind of create a portrait device on a landscape poster, <laughs> um, which is maybe like a bit of a geeky thing, but the, this landscape poster format is what we call the quad poster. And it's bizarrely a, a, a British quirk that nowhere else in the world does. Really? Um, which is good for me because it means that it, film companies always want to do a quad poster. And, and the challenges of designing to a quad are very uniquely different to designing it to a portrait one sheet poster. Um, but with the idea of the portrait title, 
the portrait in the title, I, I created this kind of um, framing device with the type, which um, which I think kind of draws you into that intimate moment really nicely. Mm, it's stunning. Um, uh, what advice would you give to um, aspiring graphic designers and, and film poster uh, designers um, in terms of like getting their foot in the door or making images as stunning as this? Um, just, just make posters. I mean, our, one of our team at the moment, Jay, he, he was making um, fan posters for ages. He's also like me, he's not trained. And so, um, I, I mean, I should say he's not trained as a designer, um, but he's trained on the job. But I mean, he, he you know, had just had that passion for doing film posters. And so um, that doing that work and kind of keeping on going and keeping on, keeping on trying and then posting that work online is, is one way of doing it. Um, and I think that there's a, it's, a, it's really amazing for me to see that there's kind of a community of people online that I see on Instagram and Twitter, people that are, are kind of sharing their fan posters. Um, so I think, you know, there are ways to get your, ways to get your work seen very easily now. Um, and I think that's, you know, people like me definitely might take notice of that. Um, so I'd say, yeah, if you're, if you're interested in designing film posters, then, then, then do it. <laughs> there's, 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 you know, the, the forum is already out there, I would say. Um, mm. And it's only through, through trying that you'll, you'll kind of, I guess, get better at it. Um, we really almost run out of time for this part of the um, session, but I'd just like to ask one final question. Um, which of your posters um, makes you the most excited? Most excited, oh well. Um, I love um, the one I did for, uh, God, The Man Who Fell to Earth. I think we have that here, yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, it's a dream to be able to work on old films that get re-released sometimes, because I'm a bit of a nerd and love like weird old films like this. And um, it, obviously Bowie is completely iconic, so to be able to, work with Bowie on a poster was like a complete dream. Um, and I think just playing with a simple image like this, you can kind of, and for me, it kind of creates this strange trippy aesthetic that I've, that I've done here to kind of get, create that sense of falling. Um, I don't know, I'm just really proud of this one. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's really different to a lot of things that you'd normally see. So it definitely makes you want to go and watch this movie. Um, I think uh, Julie's going to take over now and uh, start leading the Q&A. Thank you so much. Lovely. Thank you so much, Amy. Hi, thanks so much. Fa really fascinating and the questions are starting to roll in. Can I quickly get one in before? Absolutely. I, um, so, you know, your rise from not intern, but work experience, to then the creative director in four years. For many young programmers who might be watching, they might be thinking, that seems like either loads of luck or incredible hard work, even though one's working hard. That was 20 years ago. Lots of young programmers say, you know, I've got a distinction. Mm. I've done three internships and I've done this and I'm still not getting anywhere. So maybe you could just give us a bit of like the, the grist of what was it that allowed you to rise like that? What sort of skills that aren't necessarily to do with film posters? Yeah, might, totally. Yeah, but might be like your personal and interpersonal skills. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think it was, as you say, 20 years ago, which is like, Christ, that's terrifying. <laughs> but um, I... I do think like, weirdly, like it wasn't as much of a thing back then. Like, I don't think it was as saturated. I think there were less films being made. I think there was less people, like, yes, less designers in London. I just sort of feel like there was like, I don't know, maybe this is like 
the weird thing of hindsight, but I, I, I think like it was maybe easier then just in general to kind of get your foot in the door. Um, I mean, I, I definitely think like, you know, having family connections, like I, I think I'd certainly have a privileged background and I think that privilege allowed me to get my, my first internship and that kind of thing. And so I think, and you know, the fact is that I was living in London on my sister's floor. You know, I, I had sisters that were living in London. So I, essentially I could survive um, because these jobs didn't pay money. And I think that's something that I think hopefully is being addressed now. Yeah. Where we're seeing that people are paying for internships finally. Yeah. But I, wasn't, yeah. I think my first paid one was the gig at Empire. Yeah. And they paid me £9,000 a year, yeah. yeah, which is obviously not even minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I was lucky to be able to afford to do that. And I think I know that a lot of people aren't sure. in that position. For um, sure. Um, I mean, you know, I, I think it's really great to sort of like, you know, check your privilege, as it were. And I mean, I think lots, I feel the same 20 years ago. Things were different politically, et cetera. So that's, you know, great to say that, but also within that, there must be some tenacity or some, some kind of um, doggedness, is it workaholism, <laughs> you know? What, yeah, what, maybe what, a bit. What is, an, you know, within all of that, what are some of the skills that you need as a film poster designer, basically? Or just getting your foot in the door and maybe they're two separate things, you know? <laughs> I just think I had absolute passion for it. And I think that came through. Even if yeah. the stuff I was doing at the beginning wasn't that good, maybe it was good enough that people saw there was like a glimmer of something in that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, there was this thing, there's this thing I get sometimes, I still get it now. And I get it, I remember doing, getting it then where I would design a poster. And I think there was one for this, I was doing it at Empire and it was this Neil Jordan film called Breakfast on Pluto, which was a queer, a queer story actually. And um, Killian Murphy, um, it was in that. And, uh, and, I, and I was just playing around with this image of him and these other elements that were kind of like, he was kind of crying all these little emojis, <laughs> um, pre emojis, I guess, um, because it was before emojis. But um, that was just, I was obsessively kind of like moving these tiny little details around the, the screen. Mm -hmm. And then... Perfectionism. I mean, that's yeah. got to be a bit of a graphic designer. There is this... Prerequisite, thing. isn't it? <laughs> but because I've never studied design, it's weird. It's like, it's kind of moving things around until they feel right. But that what that feeling is, is sometimes quite hard to voice. Yeah. And so I, I think often sometimes it's quite hard for me to explain of course, my yeah. team, like why yeah. I want something to be a certain way. And I think they've yeah. been frustrated yeah. a bit, but uh, it's, it, it's when something just feels right. And, and, and when, it, when everything on that page mm. feels correct. Yeah. And I guess that's like really a thing like, special. you know, tailors who've worked for 20 years have that kind of thing called mensuration, where they just, they don't have to measure it. They just cut it and they know. So I guess it's just that, you know, repeat, repeat, repeat practice and experience that you just develop that sense where it becomes an art. I mean, I quickly switch to Amy before we go to the um, questions. You do posters for Open House. Yeah. How many have you done so far? Are you improving? <laughs> I've done two and um, one of my colleagues, Max, has done two. Um, it takes a lot of time <laughs> um, and all the like different aspects of everything is so difficult as well to constantly be changing but all of our stuff is for digital because yeah. we don't have any money um, yeah. <laughs> so um it's it's quite difficult to like make sure it looks good on all different screens so it's probably yeah quite different yeah. to having an actual printed version okay yeah absolutely brilliant okay we better get to some questions because we've got a lot okay um so you were talking about the passion and being you know and i think amy would agree she's like a a fan poster, you know, they're, they're working with that. They're not working for the distributor. Uh, anonymous uh, question, when posting fan posters online, should you watermark them or not, do you think? Um, I guess this this is questioning the idea of like, if someone takes your poster and then uses it, 
I don't know. I I I think watermarks, if su done subtly, can be good. But um, it doesn't it doesn't mean no no, no one's going to crop it off or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I get I get why that that's an anxiety, but um, I I feel like if your if your Instagram or Twitter or whatever is enough of an identity and people are connecting you to that work, then I think um, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, and, and, I think, see, and if you see your work being used elsewhere, then it's um, good. <laughs> it's well, like, not if someone's passing it to their own. <laughs> no. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's such a, a hard one to answer because I think I, I haven't, I don't even think of it in that. I've never, I've never watermarked anything, yeah. and so it's a hard one to answer. Yeah, but I would I say, it, you know, it's yours. So. Yeah, I mean, I could maybe just clarify a little bit. Um, uh, in terms of copyright of the imagery from the film posters, I mean, that's if you're showing the films, no problem, right? Well, that's the thing. It's like you're you're watermarking it, but the the images are coming from someone else's film. So you know, that there is that question. Unless I guess own, unless we don't some... own the rights to any of these posters. I can't sell any posters that I've designed because yeah. um, people have often said like, why don't you sell them? But you know. They're not mine to sell. Yeah, yeah. The, that's all handed over to the to the distributor. Yeah. But, um, the one time that we did was with Weekend, and we worked with the photographers um, together, and we kind of did a profit split with that. That was really nice to be able to yeah. get those posters out into the world. Yeah, great. Okay, we've got a question from Nick Willis. How much input do you get in the photos you receive for a film poster? Do you have any, or is it more working with just what you get? Do they say you have to use this image? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's different for every film. So as I mentioned before with Portrait, we didn't receive any actual like on-set photographs. We, so traditionally on a film set, there'll be a photographer who's taking photographs that match the scenes. And so what you'll get then is like very high quality version of, of that scene. Um, and there'll be various angles and various different shots of the cast, and often quite often we'll get plates of the sets of the sets as well. And then uh, aside from um, alongside those, hopefully we'll get is some sort of studio photography of the cast. Um, but quite often, and more often than not now, we get none of that, and we'll just get the film, and they'll be like, "Oh, we can take some screenshots," and so. We're really keen at Intermission to kind of educate filmmakers that taking good photographs is really important to promoting their films. And, um, and so, yeah, we, we, we love it when we get a bunch of good images. And, it, and even now we get, the, we get to even take the images, so that's exciting. So um, some projects will read the scripts, the film hasn't even been made, and then we'll get the chance to um, work with the filmmakers and, and do photography for the for the poster. Yeah, great. I mean, lots of young programmers um, will create a sort of illustration for the film, yeah, which is exactly. really great. There's so many artists and illustrators in the network, uh, which is always great, you know, um, because then it is their original artwork. So maybe that's the watermark thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wish I was a better illustrator. I'm, I'm really not. And I am. Um, and so my work, my work, as you may have seen through the images that we shared earlier, but like it's very like minimal and photographic yes. and typographic. That's that's kind of the style. My yes. my style, I guess. If, yes. if, if I would say I have one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have said that the art of the film poster is to distill the film into a single image, and that definitely seems to be you know if you're an, an author of film posters, you can see that convention through a lot of your work. Um, so in that sense, you choosing that image, it's great that the distributors are kind of so busy that they don't give you the, the, the still. They're not that you know rigid on what you have to use. Yeah, yeah, we get that choice, absolutely. And sorry, I, I didn't really answer the question before, but yeah, we, we, I, we as designers, we get to choose, I get to choose. And um, it's that it's that, that really kind of makes makes the poster, I guess. Yeah, and I guess- Often it's a weird kind of amalgam of images and cutouts and 
mm. head transplants. Mm, mm. Well. And, and so also the question, you know, I think that Amy was talking about, about the marketing and the artistry. Um, how many times do you watch the film? And is it like you're almost like a film journalist where you take one reading and you go with that? Or do you have that sort of forced sense that I'm going to make it about this? Just take us a little bit about that process, because I think that's probably that distillation process that yeah. maybe, you, you know, you could overthink that. I, um, I'll watch the film with a, keeping an eye on like themes and like, if there's like anything that really like conceptual behind the, the filmmaking process, or if there's particular images that really leap out at me that feel very key to the plot. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll, watch, I'll watch the film once. Um, once is totally enough. I mean, I can't design the poster unless I see the film. Yeah. But I don't need to see the film more than once because I think it's kind of, it stays with you. Yeah. And, um, and often the sketches that I do at the beginning, then they, they are the ones that end up as the, as the concepts that we develop. Like first thought, um, best thought sometimes. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's, but, but I think, I'm trying to think about my team. I think we all, tend to watch it once. And I think we all tend to have those kind of ideas, either if not during, then kind of a process of kind of working through and researching afterwards. Yeah. And it's quite fun to, to leap directly into visual research after watching a film and, and seeing how, how you could start exploring different ideas. Yeah, great. Okay, there's um, a question from Sam, uh, who's beginning a graphic design career and designing posters for theatre shows. What are the key ingredients to design exciting posters? And I don't know whether it's worth putting up one of the posters while you talk about this. Is that helpful or not? But um, it seems to be quite yeah. uh, like the ingredients there, maybe control or something like that we could look at and just, you could just quickly sort of give us a quick hop through what are the ingredients sure. but obviously the key point in the question is exciting <laughs> so yeah well control was uh, control was went through it I'm just trying to remember back to this process it's a long time ago now but um I absolutely loved this film Joy Division were like a, such an iconic band that getting the chance to work on this as a young, a young designer was like insane for me and um and I went through so many different concepts with my, with my colleagues as well. And none of them were working for the client. And um, I think we had like two or three rounds and they, keep, they kept coming back saying, it's not working, it's not working. And so this, this one really was just a kind of, it was really like a last ditch attempt to kind of get something working. And um, it, I think I was even just, I don't know, throwing things around and seeing what happened. And I, don't, I think there was something about this image that was really sticking out for me. And um, I played around with this, having the darkness behind him, this idea of the darkness kind of chasing him a bit, because it's kind of a, it's a very tragic figure. And, um, and then, yeah, obviously that, that's the poster, that and the kind of the magenta type of magenta Helvetica. Helvetica, I think, was the type that was used in the film. So that's why that's there, if I remember. Um, but essentially the elements of on this poster are really are really spared back, are really spare her back. And um, I think that's why it works. It's really, it's kind of a pure, it's a pure image, really. Um, in terms of the elements that have to be there, obviously the title and the cast and the quote really helps to sell it. Um, I'm, a, I'm not really a fan of putting quotes on posters, but sometimes when it's just one, it's fine. Um, yeah, how, do, how about you, Julia, when you're looking at this? like, Yeah, well, I think, uh, yeah, for me, what makes that exciting is the color. Um, and it's the simplicity of the image. But actually listening to you, the depth behind it is that the, the movie is about the darkness that was chasing him. So actually I think you're going to university and doing art history 
comes out quite a lot because there's a surface level of yeah those ingredients and it looks good mm. but actually you can read that image and it's got real depth and I think that's where it uh, uh, it sort of will hit you beyond just a kind of surface level that so that's how I see it so that even though I didn't mm, I, I didn't not consciously think that ever before I've seen that but now you've said it I'm like oh that's that's why it's so strong I would say Whenever I see this poster now, I'm like, I wish I'd made his cigarette shorter. <laughs> this is the perfectionist. Okay. Yeah. Like so, that. I mean, yeah. on that, you know, um, <laughs> we, there is a question actually to all of us, Sam and Amy and myself. What are some of your favourite film posters from Owen um, and why do you think they're so effective? So obviously we don't want to take too much. We've got quite a lot of questions. I would say... Alien is my all time favorite film poster, um, mainly because it's utterly terrifying. But again, it's like distilled into a simple image. The tagline, which again, I don't know if you generate those or not, Sam, but that yeah, uh, in yeah, space, I... no one hears you scream. I just think that the simplicity. And then I also was looking at it for this session. It's the, de the deeper bit is it looks like um, an audience watching a cinema screen. So it's got this like double thing going on. And I don't know if that's deliberate or whether I'm overreading it, but um, that's my one. So yeah, Amy. Um, I love the pose. I haven't actually seen this film, but I love the poster for The Love Witch. I just love the colors. I love the style of it. Um, even though it's modern, it looks old. And I just think it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's for you. It's just, it's pretty, you know, and it's got, it's got a color. And, it, and it's attractive, you know, it grabs you, yeah. Sam, I mean, I think you've talked quite a lot, but if there's one that you want to mention again, a different one. Not of my own. No. Definitely not. Someone uh, else's, yeah, someone else's. <laughs> I, um, oh my God, this is so hard. I mean, it's we like- come, We come back to it, it's like hit you with it. There's, um, it's really impossible to be like one film poster, yeah. but yeah. I think, I think I feel like I'm trying to think of like a really like mainstream one that I think I saw as a kid that maybe like set me on the path or something but um, <laughs> but I also just love really weird odd ones you know like ones that maybe people don't necessarily see as as classics now like B-movie ones or things like yeah. that yeah I mean obviously that like what the attack of the 50 foot woman or whatever you know all that stuff brilliant, brilliant. Isn't it? Okay, we mustn't dwell too much because uh, we've got more to do. Um, from Sam Cornwall, uh, what are some aspects you have to consider when designing for digital specifically? Yeah, so this is a very unique challenge now that we're facing with everything kind of going to streaming and uh, streaming being such a kind of important space for, for people watching films now. And, um, and so, I mean, I, I personally don't focus much of my time on designing for those kind of Netflix or Amazon banners, we do we do do that do that we do do those, uh, and at intermission more and more, um, and I think it's interesting because so often and particularly during COVID, um, with cinemas not being open, we were designing posters that we kind of just knew that would never get printed. They would just kind of end up as digital files online. And so I think, you know, for me, as a bit of a purist, I, I will always design the poster first. And I think from that, then we will adapt it to VOD. Um, but the, the, I guess the particular specifics of that format, online digital, I'm still grappling with, I would say. I think maybe, Yeah, I think part of me has resisted it for a long time. <laughs> and now yeah. I'm a bit like, well, we actually need to like, yeah, we. I think it's really an important space for people. But I think um, it's fascinating to see how Netflix and others will create so many of those different, for one film, they'll create many different um, mm -hmm. images and those will target different people in their different demographics. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's kind of, it's a, it's a unique challenge that I think I'm only really just beginning to get my head around. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that sort of follows on from 
Eric Garson's question about how does your work cross over into other areas of the promotion, like character stills, DVD, Blu-ray covers. I think yeah. you mentioned thumbnails and to ensure a common look or theme. I mean, I think even though they're all different, they're still often the same image. You think they're just different styles? Yeah, exactly. And so often we'll, you'll see with Netflix and Amazon, they'll strip away all the detail apart from the title treatment and an image. Um, but often that title treatment is 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 really what kind of helps is the branding aspect of it, you know. Mm. Um, and and that's how really advertising works. It's about you know making people connect between these different facets and different areas and kind of recognizing that that is from the same film. And title treatments really help with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's the campaign that string, you know, they have to connect. And it's the multiplicity of seeing it multiple times that, you know, kind of gets into you. <laughs> he also asks, um, how does your work adapt for social media posts? Um, something me and Amy were talking about, which was like, Instagram is square, right? <laughs> what happened to the quad poster, <laughs> you know? And is that gonna die or what? And how do we work with that? And then also, of course, billboards, which would be back to that kind of quad rectangle. So I don't know what the yeah, question I mean, is. Like, how does it adapt, basically? Do you just have yeah. to resize it? But then does the whole beauty Sometimes go? It's really, it's really a simple job to adapt. And other times it's a complete nightmare. So it really depends on how yeah. you're working. And I think um, often if you're designing purely for landscape and suddenly you would need to create this vertical image that can be very taxing. Um, so often sometimes if we know that we're gonna be, uh, if we know that we're gonna be designing for all these different formats on a, on a big film, it's gonna go across billboards and bus sides and all the rest of it, then we will, um, sometimes we'll design in a square but we'll have different different guides for those mm. various different um, different formats. Well, we usually always have the, the portrait and landscape, and then from there you can kind of adapt more easily. Yeah. Um, but my background in you know in small art house queer films is you know the, the fact is that many of those didn't end up on bus sides. They would more, <laughs> they would more yeah. be adapting to DVD and yeah. occasionally a. a, a an underground poster, but you know, they weren't they weren't um traveling as much, I guess. Things like control did a lot, you know, that went around the world, but um yeah, I think my background is really in small, quite niche filmmaking. Um and so now that I'm into mission I'm working on much bigger campaigns, it's really it's really fun to kind of to and challenging to yeah. to adapt yeah. all these different formats. Yeah. It must be great to see it on a billboard. Great artwork. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a couple of quite sort of specific questions because we're running out of time. Uh, Oliver um, says, what advice would you give to someone starting out in poster design? Obviously, we've talked quite a lot about that. But if, can you be a bit more like, you know, what are the companies that you might approach? Um, what might be your approach? Is it work experience intern or is it, something else my advice I mean I think first of all before even getting to the company is it's like find out what your what your little niche is within film I think if you're I think if you're interested in areas of cinema that haven't really been explored that much before then I think you're onto more of a winner because I think it's there's something more to tell I think so often now I'll see um, people doing fan posters for Marvel films. And I think that's great if that's your thing, but I think it's harder to kind of be seen amongst the sea of other Marvel posters out there. And, um, and for me, I'm much more interested in left field, underground, weird um, mm -hmm. stuff and stuff that hasn't been seen that much before. Um, and so, you know, I, it, I'm always struck when people are developing work that you know touches on on these things um, and then in terms of finding companies there are online resources um, you can go to this uh, website called the internet movie poster awards i think that's we'll put that in the chat yeah so it's imp awards and um this has kind of become like the imdb of film posters it's a, 
it's an amazing resource and a lot of the work that we do at Intermission or all the work, all the film posters that we do end up on there. Um, and I, there's a section on designers, so you can see the work of different designers throughout history, which is incredible. Oh, nice, yeah. Um, and different design companies mm. as well. And so um, it's worth, depending on where you live, obviously in the UK there aren't that many, there's a few, um, but it's really, it's really fun to kind of see the work yeah, brilliant. everyone's doing. And in terms of, in terms of like get, getting a foot in the door, that is a challenge I cannot answer now. I, I, <laughs> no. Keep, um, keep, Ten keep, keep pushing essentially. And yeah, um, yeah get your work out there on, yeah. and seen. Yeah, keep practicing. Yeah. Um, what I mean by that is like artistic practice. Um, yeah. rather than practicing. Um, there's one, another one from Oliver. Do you use specific software? You might want to say a little bit about the graphic designer software or is it yeah, absolutely. standard yeah. and then is it different for film posters? So we use Adobe Creative Suite exclusively, um, Creative Cloud, whatever it's called now. Mm -hmm. And um, I personally do everything Initially, well, after I've sketched things out, I'll, I'll work straight into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, and that allows me to build the image and, um, and add type elements and basically get it as, a, as looking as it would, as I want it to. Um, lots of layers and different yeah, filters yeah. and things that go on there. Yeah. Um, and then I'll often use Illustrator to refine type elements and bring those in. And then at the end, we'll rebuild it. And so the image will get rebuilt through um, our retouchers, who I think often maybe use other programs that I'm not aware of. Um, and then they will give that back to us and then we'll kind of rebuild the type and stuff in, in design. Yeah. So that's where it kind of becomes the, the PDF that gets sent to the printer. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So it's quite a process, obviously. And if you're like a young programmer out there, I mean, Amy, how do you do your posters? On Canva, because I don't have Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, right. So obviously that limits your ability to get maybe that professional edge, but maybe you don't need it. And maybe it is. Yeah, I, mean, maybe there, I think there are alternatives and, you know, it is expensive and yeah. it's like over £250 a year that you have to put. Yeah towards yeah. this, you know, so yeah. it's not cheap. Yeah. Um, so I think if there are other like, open source versions and, and they work for you, then that's great. I don't yeah. think you really have to use the, the industry standard. Yeah. So the last question, run out of time, um, is it's just, it's just disappeared from my eye, was um, have you ever designed a poster for film festivals? And if not, which would you try and which would you be interested in? I, I'm trying to think. Amy, you've uh, been you've done um, work for the Norwich Film Festival. Have you ever done film poster? You've done two films. Oh, I've just I've not just gone for that yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'd love to work for. I'd yeah, I'd love to do film po film posters for festivals. I think that's a whole other challenge. Um. If you don't have it, I'm gonna. I'm, before we get cut off, I'm gonna have to cut you off. I'm so sorry. Shouldn't have asked that last question. <laughs> Might have to just put. Like, but just keep that hanging, okay? Maybe it's an idea for future. Um, thank you so much. It's been brilliant, and thank you the audience. We had so many questions. Apologies for the last couple that didn't get answered. Um, it has been a complete pleasure and an in, you know education in how to sort of hone up our skills as film poster designers and appreciators. Um, so I'm just going to pass it to Amy to say thank you so much for your interviewing. Thank you so much, Sam, for being interviewed today. And if you have time later tonight, everyone, there are the three film recommendations that Sam has put out there. So if you fancy a watch party, um, we've got Alice in the Cities, amazing film. Portrait of a Lady on Fire, I haven't seen, so I can't comment, but I think Amy would say amazing film and Zero Patience, which is maybe less well known, but um, would be a good watch for those of you, maybe over 18s. Um, so if there's no other final comments, Amy or Sam, 
just to say, just say thank you yeah uh, thanks so much it's been, it's been brilliant great. and we will send a message out with those links to whoever's been here today and thanks for coming it's been brilliant what is it justice to the film poster designers <laughs> <laughs> let them be seen where the credits on the bottom instead of the distributors <laughs> Maybe no, it's, in it's the good. i think it's good Good that we're also anonymous. I think it's kind of a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe that's, you know, if you're a film poster designer or graphic designer, maybe that's where you're happier to be. So yeah, that's an another maybe good. quality good for the job. <laughs> Brilliant. No, it's, it's okay. Good. And thank you so much for having me. And thanks, Amy, for... And well, Amy and Julia for, in, for interviewing me. It's been a pleasure. Brilliant. Thank, thank you so much. You. Okay. Take care. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye.